amazing. I, a lot of places I could be tonight, sad and disappointed that I'm not here. Just the joy of the Lord is here tonight. And I appreciate that. Thank the Lord for it. I want to thank my pastor for his wisdom every time he ministers, and today was no exception to that. Praise God. I, the only time I question his wisdom is when he tells me to get up here and say something. <laughs> So I'll let y'all judge that, but I have a great respect for the ministry here at Norfolk Apostolic. It's just a, if I make it to heaven, it'll be because we got some good preachers, right? My daughter pointed out the other day, you know, we almost misquote the verse automatically where it says, the foolishness of preaching would save those that you believe and you almost think that are lost, right? Then preaching save the lost, yeah, but it saves us too. We need it. We need the word of God, the bread of life, daily, right? Give us this day our daily bread. God put it right in the Lord's prayer to remind us it's something we need every day. You may be seated. Thank you. Thanks for bearing with me for just a minute. Proverbs 16 and 11 says, A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. You think about the balance scales and how you know you've got, if you're going to buy something at the store, you want it to be balanced. You want the right balances in there. God likes just weights. He likes things to be right and honest and true, and he has the balances. He says he has the weights. He made them himself. They are his. And sometimes when we come to God like a sinner, when we come to the Lord and we say, God, I repent of my sins, it doesn't matter how deep in sin you are the lord just you put your sin on the balance and god just takes a drop of blood and puts it on the other side and it balances and the deal is made and your sins are forgiven amen he cries a little bit more out of the rest of us though on the other side of that you know there was a man that went and bought a field because he saw in the field there was a pearl of great price and he knew the only way he could get it because you can't come in if you are a thief or a robber is to buy the field outright but for him to make the deal he had to put everything he had on the balance and then it would balance and the deal would be made the Bible teaches us that we are to lay aside every weight and sin that does beset. So anytime that balance isn't quite right, we're not, we're, not, we're, we're, we're not getting that flow from the Holy Ghost. We're not getting the power of God in our lives that we need. We've got things that are weighing us down and sin and things that are besetting us and troubling us from walking with the Lord like we need to. We need to lay those things aside. We need to lay our differences. One of the most, I'll be, I'll be over, I've been around the longest time and I'll tell you right now, now as as just whether I'm a man of God or just a man that's been in church for a while it doesn't matter I'll tell you the biggest thing that will beset your mind is having differences and grievances against people I can, you can just about handle anything else right but people are supposed to be perfect especially in the church pastor you're supposed to be perfect don't you dare make a mistake because why because we look at that, and we need to realize that we got to mature out of that because it is so dangerous. That's the most dangerous thing I've ever would ever let in my spirit is a difference between me and another person in the house of God. How can you love God who you haven't seen if you hate your brother who you have seen? And that's probably some of the greatest wisdom from the Word of God from John. Amen. So... A false balance is an abomination. The Lord had to come down to Belshazzar and say, you are weighed in the balance and found wanting. The man was killed that night. He didn't even repent when he saw that. He didn't even say, oh, forgive me. He, didn't, he just went on about his way, what he was doing wrong. And he didn't even try. At least try. Do something. You know, if you feel like you, you're, you're lost and there's no hope for you, it's not true. You're still alive. You're still breathing. You need to cry out to God. That balance is there. It's just one drop of blood. It's all you need. It, don't care. it doesn't matter what you've done. Just that drop of blood on the weight. To another, the Lord said, Thou good and faithful servant, 
You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you rule over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. What did it require to balance? It was the goodness and faithfulness. If there is anything Pastor Blankenship teaches us, it's about just being faithful to the house of God. For we know that God is no respecter of persons, right? So it's the same for all of us. In the spirit, it doesn't matter how rich or poor, if you're free in prison, it doesn't matter. We can bring ourselves to the Lord and in the spirit be made free by the power of God. It's the balance is there. It's in the spirit. It's not something that you see. It's something that you know by faith. And a lot of times faith itself is enough to balance that and get what you need from God because without faith, it's impossible to please him. But when we go to him in faith, it will balance the scale and God will give us what we need for the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And then there's other times he says, by the way, when you're struggling with getting something you just can't get the victory over, every now and then it takes what? Prayer and fasting because some don't come out unless we are praying and fasting. And it takes both of those things to balance that scale and cut the deal in the spirit. Amen. Praise God. What, if God doesn't respect persons, what does he respect? Genesis 4 and 4, Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering. It was the sacrifice that God respected. Not the person itself, because he done, but the sacrifice, then he gained the respect through the sacrifice. Hebrews 11, by faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by faith, by which he obtained the witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it him being dead yet speaketh. It's powerful. A righteous dead man still speaks to us today and says, look, offer unto God a pleasing sacrifice, and he'll accept it. And if you don't think your sacrifice is being accepted, don't envy and hate your brother get it right just fix it just get it right get it right before the lord so you see somebody getting blessed you're like man they did it right and i didn't just this just get turn your turn it to god and get it right between you and him it's it's not about even jesus told him one time hey, it's not about you and that person over there it's 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 up to me who what happens to john here you guys are all worried about john and by the way john happened to be the only one that didn't get martyred so they were all dropping dead. They're like, I bet you the last one, that, like before everybody said, John's still alive. God is like, I know. You don't worry about it. <laughs> God bless you all. Have a good night.